Now that I've given you the full rundown on the hows and whats of Sherry, and if you haven't seen it yet, then please check out that video here, I'm gonna show you some of my favorite ways of using it. It's so versatile and adds so much complexity, it can easily be the star of the show or a sublime supporting act. Whether you like boozy and bitter, light and refreshing, or somewhere in between, I'll show you there's a sherry drink for everyone. You'll even find out which sherry cocktail was known as the ink of inspiration for bohemian Parisian artists in the swinging 1920s. Now I can't promise you any artistic inspiration, but I can promise you some dang tasty drinks, so let's get mixing. We're gonna get our garnish ready first. You wanna get a couple of actual big wedges out of your orange here. These ones are just going straight in your drink, so they don't have to be particularly pretty, but I just like to take a bit of the white off anyway because it is quite bitter. Same with your lemon. And with the lemon, you just want to make sure there's not any pips because obviously we're not gonna strain this drink um, and you don't want them getting stuck in your straw. Now we're gonna pop our sherries into the shaker tins. So we'll start with the Amontillado, 45 mils of that. Since we're having a sherry extravaganza, I'm gonna go with some Pedro Jimenez sherry. 15 mils of that. Then we're gonna squeeze your fruit into the tin. Now that is all you need to make a sherry cobbler, but I've just decided to take it up a little notch and add another extra layer of flavor by adding some bitters. The one that I'm going with is the local uh, Mr. Bitters honeyed apricot and smoked hickory. Just one dash of that. Now fill up your tin with some ice. Pop your tins together and shake. Once your tins all nice and frosty, that's ready. So summary. That one can actually do with a little bit more PX. I'm just gonna add a little dash more. Good. Now grab your glass out of the fridge or freezer. So this is called a shake and dump. You don't have to strain at all and that gives sort of the effect of the crushed cobbles of ice. And then I like to keep the fruit in there. Just give it a little mix in. Now, as we said, it's very important to serve this cocktail with a straw. So pop that in. Grab a nice pretty mint sprig and give it a little smack to release the aromatics. And make sure that's in right beside the straw so that every time you take a sip, you're gonna get all of that up your nose as well. And then garnish with whatever berries you have. So a little strawberry and a little cherry. Sherry cobbler. Now, once you've had a couple of cobblers and the sun starts to set, it might be time to move on to something a little more full on. So next up is an incredible bittersweet digestif, but stay tuned for my favorite of the three after that. And yes, it does contain scotch. This modern classic, the East India Negroni, is a rich and sophisticated Christmas pudding of a cocktail. Cream Sherry is a blend of drier and sweeter wines, so works really well to support the rum without being drowned out by that heavy spirit, but it's also less intense than PX. To make it, we're gonna get our garnish ready first. When I'm serving things on the rocks, I quite often just like to leave my garnish pretty kind of big and rustic since everything's nice and chunky anyway. So we're gonna start with 45 mils of your dark rum. Kind of see this drink as a pretty good after dinner digestif. 20 mils of your East India cream sherry. 20 mils of Campari. Just fill your mixing glass with as much ice as you can fit in there and then use your bar spoon to stir it round. The easiest way is just to put the back of your spoon against the inside of the mixing glass and sort of push the ice around. You don't want to be churning the ice through. When you start to feel your mixing glass get nice and cold, give it a little taste. Good. 
Um, obviously this one's gonna be served on the rocks, so if you want to have it maybe a little bit stronger than you would like, so that it kind of dilutes on the ice, you can do that as well. Grab your rocks glass out of the fridge or freezer and pop the biggest ice you can find in there. Now just use the julep strainer to hold the ice back in your glass. Squeeze your orange twist over the drink to expel the oils, which provides a lovely aromatic lift to this quite heavy drink. Garnish and enjoy. The East India Negroni. Finally, if you've ever thought that you'd fit in well with the jazz musicians and poets of 1920s Paris, then this next cocktail is the drink for you. A favourite of the bohemian artist set in 1920s Paris, transport yourself to the Moulin Rouge with this refreshing yet complex tipple. First, you want to prep yourself a lemon twist. You can also do this with a vegetable peeler. If you find that easier, just hold it and pull it down. And then trim down if you like to make it a little bit prettier. We are trying to impress artists here after all. Although I kind of think most artists are happy to drink whatever you give them. Next. We're gonna pop 30 mils of Johnny Walker Black Label into our shaking tin, and then 30 mils of your Oloroso Sherry. 15 mils of your red currant syrup, or whatever berry syrup that you're choosing to replace it with. 15 mils of freshly squeezed lemon juice. Then we're just gonna fill our shaker tin full with ice. Pop your tins together and you should get a nice long straight line here and then just shake as hard as you can. Mm. Grab your nice frosty coupe out of the fridge or freezer and just use your Hawthorne strainer to hold the ice back in the tin and strain through the fine strainer. So you're just gonna grab your twist and give it a sharp fold over the top of, a, of the drink. just give it a little rub around the rim of the glass as well. Attach it nicely to the side of the glass so it doesn't bob about in your face. The art is special. A drink to make Picasso proud. So there you have it. Three very different drinks using three very different sherries, showing just how much fun you can have once you start exploring this incredible category of wines. If you have any questions at all, please let me know. As you can probably tell, I'm always happy to talk sherry. And drop me a comment if you have any favorite sherry drinks of your own. Three great cocktails made with sherry. So now you know. <laughs>